So the resulting architecture that we're going to demonstrate here is that we're going to take Ignition, and in there we're going to build our data models, our digital twins, keeping track of all of our real-time data changes. Once we have that single source of truth, we're going to see how easy it is to then publish that to an available MQTT server through IoT Bridge and insert that, being able to do sub-millisecond insert through the Snowpipe streaming API into Snowflake. Now, once I'm done with taking all this factory data into Snowflake, then Travis is going to show you a demo of taking JDBC into Ignition Cloud Edition and being able to ac access that information. So right now we're going to jump into that demo. And the first thing I'm going to do is we'll go into our topology here, is we're going to go into the Ignition platform and look at building out our information. So here's my Ignition dashboard. A lot of you may already be familiar with this and using the unified namespace, you can see here I've got a tag provider called Smart Factory. And in the Smart Factory, I've got Smart Factory 1. And then I've created a, a line 1 with uh, machines on that, line 2. We can go down here to line 7. And the way that we used to do this, you'll notice here I've got this extruder and we would have created a folder. And then under that, we have had all of our process variables. Now, if we take a look at how we've been doing this for the last five or six years, everybody was saying, okay, Arlen, we got to get all this up to a data lake. Okay, we can do that. So let's take all of our information here. And let me see here. Part count. So we'll take these first floating point process variables and we'll drag and drop those into here and literally representing our data lake, we go, boom, job done. There's all of our process variables in a data lake. But without context, this data lake quickly turns into a data swamp. Because if I look at this 149 degrees, well, where did it come from? And typically that means you're gonna, okay, well now I go do another query from another database and I gotta figure out where it came from and then for the contextual data, I may have to query two other databases. And it's like Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. We threw him up into a data lake, and then we spend all of our time trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So what we're going to look at is let's delete this data swamp for now. And before we do that, let's go in and using a UDT, let's take the notion of that extruder machine that we had and let's start defining what we really mean. And the first thing is that we probably want some asset information. So asset ID, asset serial number, location, and then being able to go down and define that melt temperature and seeing that, well, I don't care really where it came from, but it's gonna represent zero to 20, 225 somethings. So those are gonna be in degree C. So all of our contextual data is defined within this model. Now, as you can see here, I've got but my bunker, my chiller, my compressor, so all of my models I've defined. So we'll go back into our tags, and instead of this extruder being a folder, we can see here that is of data type extruder, and we can drill into that and see what our asset ID is, our serial number, location, then drill into the melt temperature with all of that contextual data. Now, one of the big advantages with being using models in Ignition is that gives us an easier, a very easy way to build templates to be able to visualize our data. So we can look at that extruder and say, well, that looks like our extruder. And from a process information, maybe that feeds into a bunker. And then from there, it feeds into a CO2 dryer. And then we might want some energy data. So our factory energy, we've got our nice Opto 22 KYZ meter coming in, and maybe we want to measure some three-phase energy around the, that motor on that extruder. But really, the point here is that on Thursday, April 25th at 11.42, this is our single source of truth. And what we want to do is we want to get that single source of truth into Snowflake. So we're going to go to either AWS or Azure Marketplace, install IoT Bridge for Snowflake, and when we do that, it's going to create two very simple databases in Snowflake. It's going to create a node and a stage database. 
And then from here, you can see that we've built some views in, but we don't know anything about a smart factor. We don't know anything about an extruder or a bunker or a dryer or a conveyor or a haul off. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our ignition and in our transmitters, simply define our smart factory to publish to this Snowflake MQTT server. And when we do that, we're going to enable our MQTT. And what happened there is that we just established a TLS protected outbound only connection to an available MQTT server. And with MQTT Spark Plug, we looked into the Smart Factory tag provider and published that information. IoT Bridge was sitting there very quiescently, and all of a sudden, these MQTT Spark Plug messages started to arrive, and using the Snowpipe streaming, insert that into the Snowflake database. So, a few seconds ago, we didn't know anything about a Smart Factory, and now, if we refresh, Lo and behold, there we have a Smart Factory 1, and we have views of all of the machines. Now, before I go into that view, this is all automatically created because the data in Snowflake uses the Sparkplug schema. We can go in here, and we've pre-built a view to go in and ask the Snowflake SQL database what models have been published. And in here, oops, sorry node registry what models have been published we have a node registry and we can see oh we found out about an extruder and a dryer and a bunker and all of the other machines we had in that factory we didn't have to write a single line of code and now that we've got views of the udts or that digital twin if you will now we can come back up and look at our extruder as a view and you can see here that we didn't write a single line of code and now we've got all of our process variables all of our columns are high grade with all of the real-time data that we got from the iot bridge from ignition i do have one th more slide i want to go through and that is very very quickly some of the advantages uh, that we've realized number one is that we're going into a snowflake platform that means thousands of snowflake engineers are already knowledgeable on how to use that day one so literally snowflake engineers could take what i just showed you and show you how to get business value out of that immediately the other thing as pugel said is that with ignition we can create 20 different data types we need to leverage those all other digital twins that I know of today only support a Boolean, a float, an integer, or a string. So everybody will get a copy of this. You can read through all of the other advantages of, that we see of Snowflake over any other application that's out there today. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Travis. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Arlen. For that, so I want to I want to you know continue off where Arlen left where Arlen you know um, left off there, which is got all of that data you know all those UDT models into Snowflake uh, with that context, all that data is coming in there, and it's and it's stored over time, right? Every value that's being published is going to ultimately land in that database, and once it's there, we want to be able to do awesome things with it. And from an ignition standpoint, uh, we can leverage ignition or ignition cloud edition uh, that is in AWS or Azure to build enterprise dashboards and be able to, to query that data and work with that data and discover all of those amazing assets that are there. And we can easily do that through JDBC. So you can go and download the JDBC driver for Snowflake, uh, install it to Ignition. We will look at, we're, we're working on getting that uh, bundled with Ignition by default. Um, but with that, once you connect, you can issue standard SQL queries anywhere from Ignition to access that data. And you get incredible throughput, speed, performance, it's easy to scale. Uh, there are also REST APIs there too, but the SQL is very simple. And, and if you want to get into things like uh, going into uh, ML uh, or the LLM capabilities that Google was talking about, it's certainly possible. We can, we can leverage, uh, there's two services I've seen customers use right away, which is anomaly detection that's in Snowflake, and you can actually train a model 
by simply issuing a SQL query to train, say, here's this, the set of data I want to train my model on. And then you can call a fun, another SQL query to call to, to see if there's an anomaly that was detected off of another set of data. There's also a forecasting service that they have that you know, allows you to forecast. And they're just very easy to work with. And we're going to be publishing a resource to the Ignition Exchange that is going to show you that that's going to be the dashboard I'm about to show you. And it'll have a screen that that works with those that anomaly detection service. So you can see how it, you know you can have a UI from Ignition that allows you to train and, and, and use those models in there. So what I want to do now is kind of show you just that last piece, which is how, how do we get that dashboard you know, into Ignition? So I'm going to, at this point, we're going to come back and go over here. So here I've got Ignition on my local machine. Again, it could be on-premise, on could be in the cloud, doesn't really matter. Uh, what I've done is I've installed the Snowflake JDBC driver that's in here at Ignition, and then we can go make a connection to Snowflake. I've got a couple of them. So I've got the Snowflake CL, which is going to the Snowflake uh, system that Arlen just pushed all that data to. And so we're just making that connection. Now that it's a valid connection, you know, Ignition, we just issue SQL queries. And I've got this dashboard here that again, will be available. And when I first started, I haven't pressed the refresh button yet. When I first started, you know, I opened this dashboard, you can see that those were the, the, the data models that were, that were found. And Arlen now has got a whole smart factory, all that's in there. So if I refresh this, basically we're gonna see all of those data models. So we just did a query against that view that showed the registry. Here's all the models that are there. If I look at that extruder as an example, over here, I can actually see, here's all the, the parameters of that data model. Here's all the metrics for the melt temperature. There's that range that he was showing, 0 to 225 degrees C. And I've got one instance of it. That's the line seven you know, extruder here, extruder seven, that, that we can see what those, parameters are that asset ID, serial number, and location, and see those information. So I've discovered now this UD, this uh, data model that is in Snowflake. And all I'm doing is issue queries against it. And from there, we can then go grab that data. And we know all that context of the data. So if I go to my history here, what uh, we just had a simple screen that allows us to go and query the history. And again, there'll be another screen that shows kind of the anomaly detection. We'll get this on the exchange. But if I go to my smart factory, go to smart factory one and go to that extruder, uh, go to line seven, go to extruder seven, whatever time period I'm looking at, here's all the tags I'm interested in. I can, for, for this date range, I can apply. And what we're doing is we're going to go query that data and bring it back. And so here is the information for that extruder for this time period. We just query the data and each of these different plots the range you see there is the range, the metadata of that tag, you have the engineering units over there, you get more of that context. And of course, if we want to go further and build you know, some ML or, or, or different models off that, you certainly could. Uh, and we have uh, you know, a machine learning manager and ignition you could do. There's obviously great tools in Snowflake. It's, once the data is there in that format, it makes things so much easier to go a lot further. So hopefully it gives you a good, good sense of, of kind of what's possible there with that. Um, really easy to interface with that data and build these kind of dashboards uh, again once you know once you have uh, that inf that information in there.